The firestorm keeps on burning, searing, exposing, revealing, cleansing, destroying, exciting, demoralizing, consuming, exhuming, hope making, and heartbreaking. Going faster and faster, roaring louder and louder, feeding, seething, bequeathing, feeling better and better, and worse and worse every day. Uncertainty, wonder, insecurity, freedom, indiscriminate, unrequited rage, stark, incredulous, understanding denied by the kindest of denials. There'll be no recovery. Healing will come, has begun. Reorganization, renewal, the province of, re of community. Bureaucracy and power, management and control, engineering, technology and money cannot address or redress manifold compounding tragedies. Try as they might. How's it all going, Liz? Hair raising. A hair raising, mind altering, body thrashing, emotional roller coaster. 157 dead. 1,100 houses. 2,500 displaced, just in our region. Animals, birdsong, all firestorm climate refugees, lost to place and time. The forest, our home, shelter and filter, sequester, respirator, refuge, repose, respite, restoration, Our history, our culture, cherished memories, practiced rituals, precious artifacts, sacred places, identity, coherence, meaning. Our context, our cocoon, wondrous wet womb, crucible, chrysalis, pregnant possibility, Evolving, unfolding, enveloping, enfolding, orchestrating, synthesizing, tapping, draining, excavating, mining, writhing, drying, drying. Holocene, equilibrium, gone. Are you sure you're okay? Climactic canaries all. We are gay as disruption, disaster communities. Quivering, quaking, eerily vulnerable. Quick to tears, to rage, only ever superficially resilient. Torn, unfurled fragments, capricious holes, broken hearted web, heartbroken being. Like Arche, New Orleans, L'Aquila, Tuvalu, Santa Barbara County, our inundated north and desiccated south, our parched centre, once flowing rivers, our planet ablaze, our enduring legacy, combust combustion apocalypse. Sing out if you need a hand. Unfortunately and essentially, it is now up to us. All of us. Each one of us. And only us. With resolute, absolute focus on the real work, the restorative work, the great healing work. Together, now from this place, 
now on this land, now in our minds, now in our hearts, now in our deeds, together. Let us know if there's anything you need. Ever present, effervescent, passionately engaged humanity, precarious, uncertain, we enter new realms, exhausted and exhilarated, inspired and overwhelmed. We find more love from even deeper wells, wells of wheeling humanity. Swirling and swarming, connecting and collaborating, we persevere together. Turning to one another, we endure another day together. We entertain hope and heartedly laugh together. Turning another sod sharing another meal, we heal together. My name's Daryl and I'm from Kingway. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of my friends and colleagues who've made a really big difference over the last uh, four months. Um, there's a PowerPoint that's come up, good. Um, so yeah, onto the first slide. I want to celebrate some of my friends and colleagues. They've done an extraordinary job in the aftermath of the fires. I'm so proud and humbled by how many people, people I had never seen before, um, came out from under the trees, stepped up or stepped into places to do extraordinary work over the last four months, particularly um, in the first two months when there wasn't a lot of other people around. The area was cut off, there was army everywhere, there was lots of construction people and the place was a mess. So I want to celebrate these people particularly. Um, Thomas and Tessa Libreri um, at the foot of our mountain set up acres and acres of material aid. Um, as only an entrepreneur can do, Thomas and Tessa um, contacted almost everyone they knew in Melbourne and linked up and shipped up goods. They got them through faster than any of the community service agencies could. They were absolutely incredible and made sure, particularly in the first four or five days when there was no one getting up onto the mountain, that we had necessary food, clothing, blankets, etc. Cameron Kane is the president of our football club and he's also a local policeman. Um, Cameron's, Cameron's off work at the moment. Um, he's had an incredibly harrowing time. He had to identify a lot of the bodies in our area, but he also played an incredible leadership role in having the first game of football happen at the start of the season. It was attended by over 2,500 people and we had our Prime Minister and our Premier and many other dignitaries there on the day and it was an extraordinary community event. Um, Lisa Burton um, is, a, I think, a second or a third generation family member up at King Lake West Pheasant Creek. She saw an immediate need to look after animals, so Lisa stepped into that position. She got onto um, the CB radio, called trucks all around Australia and brought hay, seed and food for the animals. So Lisa coordinated animal care for the first probably 12 weeks after the fire and she was absolutely incredible at managing that process. Bev and David Johns, they manage the King Lake West hub. King Lake um, is a difficult community to understand when you're from Melbourne, I think, because it's a linear community along a ridge. So we had a community hub set up at King Lake, but 15 kilometres away there is 2,000 people at King Lake West Pheasant Creek and they also needed care. So Bev and David ran the community hub from the um, local Uniting Church. Colin French and Wally Spezza have stuck to a process that they began in about the fourth week after the fires. They realised that we were going to need representation to talk to state and federal government people and also to non-government organisations and corporations wanting to support our community. So Colin and Wally initiated a democratic process. They got 
endorsement from the Australian Electoral Commis Commission and we held an election within eight weeks of the fires to elect 10 representatives who would then become King Lake Ranger's representative group and be the conduit for communication in amongst a lot of chaos. Colin speaks about there being four tragedies of the bushfire. The first one obviously was loss of life, the second one loss of infrastructure, the third one for Colin was loss of communication and so that was our biggest difficulty after the fire, getting communication going again. The main reason we set up the King Lake Rangers representative group was to ensure there were regular, reliable uh, means or venue or um, conduits for communication. And the, the fourth tragedy I'll talk about a little later um, was community development and our community capacity. Um, Peter and Jodie Thornycroft have been incredible keepers and carers of mental health. Um, Peter was featured in the aftermath of the fire. He was the fellow on the roof in his shorts and thongs of the pub um, who literally saved the pub and saved 25 people's lives on that day. Um, a hundred days later, Peter was featured on the front page of The Sun when they were following up with the heroes of the firestorm. And Peter was candidly honest about how he was travelling and how difficult he found his, new his newfound notoriety actually was and how also impotent he felt because he wasn't able to contribute to the physical rebuilding of his community in the way that he thought he might. Um, his feature in The Sun drew many, many men out um, in the King Lake Rangers to talk about the difficulties they were also facing. Jodie, his wife, has been an entrepreneur. She set up the, um, the King Lake Rangers community dining. We've got our two chefs here today in the front row. Um, this has been a voluntary kitchen. The chefs are voluntary and all of the community uh, volunteers contribute. It runs five days a week. Um, on a Wednesday night, which is roast night, 200 people come to the King Lake Rangers Community Dining. This building was vacant last year and was vacant for three years in our main street. Um, and that's a real block when there's so few buildings in your main street that's closed. So to be able to reclaim this space in the aftermath of the fire has been a tremendous victory for us. Jody's also negotiated with the North Eastern Division, a metro division of GPs, to get GPs up to our area. Um, and they've done an extraordinary job too. We've had to go outside, our, beyond our boundaries to the metropolitan area. Um, and Jody's organising the Women's Weekend Away, which my partner is going to. Um, <laughs> there's, there'll be over 300 women going down to Lawn for three days to... I don't know what they do, but I'm sure. <laughs> um, Adele McElain is a third generation uh, resident from Pheasant Creek. Pheasant Creek is a settlement. There's 2,000 people there. Um, it's mainly what's called rural living. I'm not a great advocate of rural living. They're five acre blocks. What they do is it's a cheap way to subdivide farmland and it leaves you with no physical infrastructure for a township. So, Adele has been working extremely hard to develop a report to turn Pheasant Creek, King Lake West into a town, to develop an urban design framework, to build the community infrastructure that's centralised, that enables people to have civic engagement and build critical mass for their community economy. Um, Adele's a visionary and absolutely incredible. Um, John Burgess and Pete Williams are from um, Flowerdale and they, they established the Flower, Help Flowerdale Now blog on the third day after the fires. This brought international community attention to our area and it was an extraordinary initiative. Chris Ruiz started up the Men's Shed, got a uh, block of land in the main street for free and he's well on the way to establishing a Men's Shed in King Lake which will be a, a major point I think where we organise our infrastructure rebuilding because it'll be a hive of activity for local tradesmen. Um, Chikwan is a local, a local Buddhist nun and we did a, re a Resilient Futures Alliance mapping process um, or an education process with the Resilient Futures Alliance in uh, March and one of that was to relentlessly, one of the objectives of the training was to relentlessly map community conditions. When the community conditions have changed as much as they have in King Lake, this has been an incredibly valuable thing to do and, and the Reverend Chikwan has really stuck to her guns, talking and talking and talking and mapping and mapping and mapping. We now have a better understanding of our terrain thanks to her. 
And Ali Griffin is an artist from Steeles Creek. Um, she initiated an exhibition at her three stories gallery in Healesville. It was absolutely extraordinary. It was called Resurrected Memories and it was burnt found objects from fire affected properties. Incredibly evocative and powerful. Um, the next section of my talk is about consternation. I won't, I'll go through this very quickly. Um, that's Vibra's map of how to do recovery. <laughs> uh, that's the Shire's initial go at how to make do recovery. Now this is Flowerdale's attempt at how to do recovery. They have thrown everything at this model and they haven't been able to fault it yet. I have found the Flowerdale people absolutely inspirational. I think it's the inspiration of scale. Flowerdale's a relative small community. King Lake's got 4,000 people stretched across the best part of 40, 50 kilometres. So it's difficult for us. We're a, um, we're a community that spins out rather than comes into a centre. So we all go off the mountain in different directions, down different roads every day. We're really peri-urban people living uh, in a sleeper suburb who drive off three different points off the mountain. So it's really difficult in King Lake to get a centre of community. There isn't one, there's no real heart. Flowerdale, um, being a smaller community but still no less linear, uh, with the smaller population, they've been able to get organised a lot better. And one of the things that the Flowerdale people have said from the outset, that there is no hierarchy and there is no politics in Flowerdale. And that's been to their absolute advantage. They've streeted ahead in terms of uh, being able to effectively respond to the bushfire emergency. Their model works something like this. It's an inverted pyramid. Whenever we look at the state and uh, local government models, communities are always at the bottom. This was their, they were actually looking over the computer one day and they saw it and said, it looks better upside down. So they flipped it up the other way and that was the critical insight, that was the critical moment. So what they do is everything comes through the community and then they have almost in the working groups of the community leaders, the people who are presidents or secretaries, treasurers, etc., of community groups, then they have work engines. Then they have work engines. The work engines are just basically a place to process the information, to get the data behind whatever it is that they're aspiring to in terms of recovery, and to get a fairly fully fledged proposition. The proposition then comes to their representative committee. They've followed our lead at King Lake and had an election a couple of weeks ago. They've elected six people. We've elected 10. I think Marysville will elect about 10 as well. And then they've, they've picked out facilitators, specific people who are very, very good at negotiating with power. So that's how all of their projects flow. Nothing happens around it. There's no bypass. Community. Um, these are Vibra's uh, models for their template for the community renewal plan. We think this is fantastic. Everything that we would want to do could fit into this. Uh, this is just my go at trying to make sense of it. In the community development area, we've put planning. There is no strategic planning. There's no urban design frameworks across the King Lake Ranges area. So it's an ad hoc developed area. So one of our key planks th th is to slow down and get some basic planning foundations in place before we do any rebuilding. Or we will just rebuild ad hoc and no one in King Lake wants that. We want a much more coordinated, much better designed community, not something that's just unfolded and unravelled over time. We've also looked at governance. Governance is going to be a critical factor for us. We currently sit under every boundary under the sun. So we cannot do anything in a peri-urban area without having to talk to multiple agencies and multiple government departments, multiple service providers, multiple infrastructure uh, agencies. I got exhausted trying to find out how to get community health services for our area. We had to go and talk to Healesville, Plen Plenty, Rangers, Nilambic, Whittlesea, Plenty Valley, Yay, and Seymour Mitchell community health centres. It took us a year to meet with the CEOs and by the time we got around two of them had resigned and we had to start again. <laughs> they all get some funding to provide services in King Lake but we've found that outreach services are don't reach services in peri-urban areas. So we want to have, we want to ultimately govern our own community health service and have it as an attractor that builds that critical mass within the centre of the community that helps us, I suppose, spin in, uh, relocalise rather than 
fragment outwards. Um, and culture and learning were also important. We have our kids go to, over the last five years, the tracking data shows that they go to 25 different secondary schools from three primary schools. That fragments not only the kids, the, it also fragments the adults, the parents who follow them to the schools. And it also has an impact on our sporting and arts community as well, as kids are not available. And it's a tough call being a super commuter at 11. Some of the kids spend an hour and a half on the bus going to school, an hour and a half on the bus coming home. So obviously a high school and post-primary education is a priority for us in the aftermath of the fires. Um, just to, we also want to engage a systems view. This is looking to King Lake from Melbourne. So that's what we must look like from the offices, I would imagine. And we think that there's a counter view, <laughs> which is looking to Melbourne from King Lake. Now, these are really important worldviews because bureaucrats and big business will look at us with the first view and we definitely look at Melbourne with the second view. The two views need to come together in a successful recovery, rebuilding, whatever you call it. I'm, I'm with Lucy, I don't think we're going to recover. I think we need to be reorganised and renewed. So for me, community rebuilding, and I'm drawing on Cheryl Walters' um, influential article. Yeah, that's fine. Um, in Meredith Minkler's book, Community Organising and Community Building for Health. And it's about thinking about community not as a place, but thinking of community as a way of being. The most frustrating thing for us and the reason we've been slow to recover, I think, at one level, is local politics, is power. And for me, it's the Freirarian horizontal violence of the mutually oppressed. So long have we been downtrodden in our area that people turn on each other rather than turn to each other. And it's the structures that we've got um, don't help that process. We need really good, facilitatory, respectful, enabling institutions to partner with community. So the idea has to be that we all operate as community, not as government and bureaucracy, corporation, non-government organisation and community. The community groups that have formed to, to have the discussion with government have absolutely no resources at the moment. We've been promised resources from state government to support us, but at the moment we're all working as volunteers and we're absolutely exhausted. It is really, really hard work. It is really, really hard work to keep up with local government, Vibra and state government agencies that have enormous resources behind them when you've also got to look after your block, look after your family, look after your friends. Um, so we just want our rebuilding process to reflect the five dimensions as, con as described by Cheryl Walter. It's got to include community development, the power with. It's got to include good integrated community planning, not top-down power over planning, but participatory that also values local knowledge. It's got to include community action, the power to actually do something. The men in our community particularly want to be involved in the recovery and have found it very, very difficult to engage. Community consciousness, something about depth of community, something about really thinking what does community mean and what is its place. And that's the power of community. And also looking at our context, as Lucy described in the poem, looking at our broader context. How do we work within the limits? How do we work within constraints? How do we work within unfolding crises? How do we plan to adapt and ameliorate some of the factors that are causing those crises? Um, I'm incredibly proud of the work of Marysville, King Lake Rangers and Flowerdale. And we're going to continue to work together to support one another as we recover, redesign, re-emerge from the crisis. We look forward to working with Vibra. We look forward to working with our local government authority and the people of Victoria. But we do need support. We're finding it incredibly difficult. Um, we've been a super commuter community for a long time as it is. People don't have the civic time or space to engage in community groups when they're commuting an hour, hour and a half each way to work 
and working up to 10 hours a day. So we found families under enormous pressure, neighbourhoods under enormous pressure and particularly community organisations. We had 47 before the fires. I would think that's probably down to about half as a consequence of death or people who are now outside the area. We lost one in 25 people on February the 7th. Um, so the sort of support we need for community building, it's less about material welfare, it's more about genuine support for community organisations so that we can bring back things like our pony club, so that we can bring back things like community arts for kids after school, so that we can make sure our sporting clubs can put teams out on the court. Those kind of things are vitally important at the moment and probably more than anything over the next couple of months we'll need some governance support, we'll need admin support, we'll need people to kind of step up and step into that space. I'm not sure where they're going to come from. Thank you Rhonda.